Hey, what's up guys? So today I'm bringing you a tutorial on how to do one of my basic uh, desert paint jobs. So this is gonna be super easy. You guys will be able to follow along. Uh, today we're gonna do it on the M249 Para. This is one of my buddies. He asked me to paint for him. Um, basically it's gonna be a basic desert themed, two, basically two color desert um, camouflage with distressing. So it's gonna look worn down, have that battle worn finish when we're done with it. So. Materials you're gonna need if you wanna follow along with me are two different colors of Rust-Oleum. First is Rust-Oleum Khaki. Second is Rust-Oleum Nutmeg. Okay, Satin Nutmeg. All right, you'll need a sanding sponge or sandpaper. This one's 120 grit, that'll work. Um, I got a piece of sandpaper here I use. This is 180 grit. You need some lacquer thinner and some rags to be able to wipe off the lacquer thinner. All of this can be purchased at Home Depot. Um, Walmart also has the paint itself. Um, and it's all fairly inexpensive. Like each can of spray paint ranges from four to six bucks. Sanding blocks, five dollars. Sandpapers, a couple bucks. Uh, this size of quart of lacquer thinner is 10 bucks. A whole massive bag of rags is 10 bucks. So it's fairly inexpensive. All right, so the first thing you wanna do is go over your project and mask off anything that you don't want to be painted. That's one uh, item I forgot to include in your uh, necessary items for this project is masking tape. So um, things you wanna tape off are like any glass on any optic. For example, we're gonna do the red dot side on this guy. Um, if you're going for like a two-tone look, you want to mask off any parts that you wanna keep the original color and um, stuff like that. So, um, also people have kind of concerns about paint getting into the gearbox, like on other M4 platforms and that kind of thing, like paint getting up through here, through the motor grip or in through the barrel, that kind of thing. Um, I've actually tried on purpose to get paint into the gearbox and it's really like, it's pretty much impossible. I've actually never done it. So you don't have to disassemble your gun entirely just to get the shell out. Really, you just want to mask off the parts you don't want to be painted. Um, what I will do for the barrel, because you don't want to spray paint directly into the barrel, um, I take a piece of paper and roll it up and I just shove it down the front of the barrel, like um, I'll show you here in a second. And that takes care of that all the way. Um, sometimes I'll tape the trigger because the trigger looks cool when it stays the original color of the gun. I might do that on this one, um, just for kicks and giggles to show you. Um, when we're dealing with like the 249, the feed tray. So here the top of the gearbox is exposed. With this guy, we probably, I probably will run a piece of paper over the top here just to keep everything out of there, just to keep it clean looking. Not necessarily because I'm worried about paint getting inside, but so yeah, that's it. Just go ahead and grab your masking tape and start taping. All right, guys, I got everything taped up. Sorry to show you the process of me doing that. It's fairly self-explanatory. I just can't do it with the with one hand while filming. So anyways, you can see I got the glass on my red dot here and I got the inside taped up. I decided to, to tape up the feed tray uh, cover just because I think that gray is gonna give it a cool contrast. And I did slip a piece of paper down the barrel to keep paint from getting up there. So that's basically all the preparation that I take for a basic paint job. Um, I'm going to show you one optional step. You guys don't have to do it, but I typically do, is I will take a uh, rubbing alcohol and, or just pure alcohol and a rag, and I will wipe down the entire project just to get these kind of grease stains off of here. Um, it does kind of help the paint to stick a little bit better, but I've not done it before and it's never really been an issue. It's just kind of an optional ste step if you guys want to take it. So I will show take you your rag. alcohol, take your rag. And I just did this, but my video cut out. So just wipe it down and just try to get all that grease off of there. Just like so. And alcohol evaporates super fast. You can see how fast that evaporates right there. So you don't have to worry about it. And just go over the whole project and you can see how much dirt it actually takes off. Okay, we just finished wiping down the whole thing with alcohol. 
And I'm pretty glad I did that. Look how dirty this was. So it's probably a good step to take just to at least clean your gun off before you throw paint all over it. But it's really not necessary. It's just kind of an additional step you can take. Um, and I just want to talk to you guys real quick about, I mean, I see so many posts about people just so worried about painting your guns. Like, oh, should I do it? Should I not? Dude, if you want to do it, just just paint your gun, man. Like, it's, it's an airsoft gun, number one. And it's... It's so hard to, you can't mess it up. Really you can't because you can just strip it down, throw paint over it. You can even just paint over a bad paint job. I've done that a hundred times. And like I said, I've done tons and tons of paint jobs before and it's, it's honestly so satisfying. It gives you kind of a cool, your own little custom thing going on and it's, it just really makes the project, the rifle yours. You know what I mean? So don't be afraid to paint your rifle. You're not gonna mess it up. You're not gonna break anything. Just, if you follow these steps, just use the basic principles of a good spray paint um, camo job, you're going to be happy with what you turn out with. So don't even worry about it, just do it. Okay, so it's almost time to paint, guys. So first things first, before we take it outside and start spraying it up, go over your project one more time and make sure you've done these few things. One, make sure every single thing is masked that you do not want paint on. Um, second step, if you chose to take it, make sure you've got your whole project cleaned off, wiped off with the alcohol or rubbing alcohol, it doesn't matter. And lastly, go through your project and make sure that everything is tightened down that needs to be. Don't have any loose motor grips or stocks or whatever. That way, when you do um, hang your project up to paint it, that it doesn't fall or get damaged that way. So that brings me to my next point. Always, always, always is you want to hang your gun up when you paint it. There's none of this laying it down and then spraying half and flipping it over nonsense. Just throw that idea out the window. Always, always, always hang your project up. And to do this, my favorite method is to use paracord. Paracord works absolutely awesome. It's super strong and it will do the job just fine. So what you're going to want to do is identify a part on your gun that's going to be sturdy enough to hold its weight. It's not going to break off on you or fall off. And I think I'm going to go right on this, this loop right here. So we're just going to loop it and pull the paracord so that our ends meet just like about right there. Just like that. Okay. And we're going to take it outside, guys. Okay, guys, we got the project hung up here in my tree outside. Um, likewise, just how you chose a good point on the gun where it's not going to snap and the gun's not going to fall and break. You want to hang it up. Uh, or tie it to something that's super sturdy and strong like this tree, for example. Um, preferably, you want to always paint outdoors or in an open, well-ventilated area. Um, keep you from getting lightheaded and whatnot. Keep you protected. Um, you don't want to paint on a really, really windy day. We got a light breeze out today, but it's not going to affect it too much. It's actually going to help with the drying process. And you don't want to paint in a super humid environment or super cold or super hot. You kind of just want a nice nice temperatures so or preferably to paint out in like a shed or a garage that kind of thing okay okay the first color we're going to need is the camouflage khaki by rust -Oleum, okay grab your spray paint give it a good shake nothing too crazy just about like that okay i'm going to tell you what's good and what's not good okay what's not good you do not hold your spray can this close to your project ever okay and you also don't want to be like three feet away from it um, the good distance to be is about roughly a foot maybe a little bit more 12 14 inches away and what we're going to do is we're going to use my method i call the dusting method so basically you're going to take it and just do light little dust just like that you're basically misting your project until the whole thing is covered um, to the desired effect, just like so, okay? We're just gonna mist it. You kinda see it's getting a little dusty, and that's what you want, it. that's what you want, just like that. If you go on too heavy, if you leave like a heavy, heavy stream, it's gonna run, and it's gonna look like crap, and you're gonna hate yourself, so. Just do light dusting, just like this. And then uh, periodically shake your can. You, you'll be able to kind of see when the when the paint's kind of 
not coming out perfectly. Another thing to keep in mind when you're painting your project is most of you guys have M4s, um, your selector switch. You need to rotate pieces that you rotate for operation of your of your um, of your gun, like your selector switch. You need to do a coat and then flip that to like semi or full auto because it reveals a little bit of a black spot if you don't, and then paint it again. And make sure you get every hidden little crevice, everything you want to be painted. You got to make sure you get. I've noticed plastics, like the carrying handle, tend to not stick as well. The paint will stick better to metal. So you want to go a little bit lighter even. Maybe increase your distance away. And forgive me, this is not perfect filming. I'm ducking under this branch and trying to do this with one hand. So. dust in there just like so. Okay, we've got this pretty much all the way coated with our first coat. And this is what it looks like when you use the dusting method, okay? Uh, one thing to keep in mind if you're wondering like what's if, if you're putting it on too heavy or not, a good rule of thumb is if the paint starts to look wet, if it starts to look shiny, you're probably putting on too much. You should move away from that spot and let it dry for a minute. If you go too much longer, it's gonna run, which means the paint's gonna start to drip and it will unfortunately dry like that on your project and you have to sand or scrape it off and start over once the project is dry. Um, so keep in mind um, all the different crevices most of you guys are probably doing M4s so um, check the front of the mag well um, where your magazine goes check the front of the of your grip um, front of your barrel that kind of thing so like if you were to look straight up at your gun all those pieces don't forget about painting those as well and what I was kind of talking about earlier about um, the selector switch that kind of thing with the 249 what I'm going to want to do here in a minute is extend the stock because there's going to be black all under here. And so if he's playing with this, pulls out the stock, he's going to have a gnarly black line, black spot there. He's not going to want. So, and then just try to get in every uh, crook and cranny. Anywhere you see black and you want paint, make sure you get it. See how that's looking shiny and wet. If you do this right, if you do the dusting method right, it should never really look wet. And if it does, it's just because you laid it on a little bit hard, which is not a problem. You just have to wait a minute for it to dry to keep going with it. Keep going over it make sure you look find those spots that are exposed and tag them another thing that I want to change is like this red dot dial I'm gonna to want to spin this because there's gonna be black where um, that part is touching the front of the dot it's red dot itself got to spin that because it's gonna be black and I'll paint that in the second coat if you're wondering how long your paint will take to dry, um, typically a coat, if you use the dusting method, uh, a coat will be dry in about five to 10 minutes. Not cured, but you can definitely handle it, um, take it down, put it back up, whatever you're gonna do, if you're gonna distress it, that kind of thing. Um, you definitely can work with it after about 10, 15, five, 10, 15 minutes or so. 15 is kind of pushing it, but if you wanna be safe. Okay, so I pulled the stock out and you can see that um, that black line appeared that I was talking about. And then also on the red dot, I swapped it around. So you wanna go ahead and do that with your selector switch or your optics, whatever you gotta do, and go ahead and touch it up. Next 
color is satin nutmeg. Um, this color, guys, I think looks really, really ugly um, with khaki. If you lay it on heavy and you're probably like, well, why are you putting it on then? Because I'm not going to lay it on heavy. So what you're going to do is do like, I taught you, I just taught you how to dust your project. Now I'm going to like, this is like a light dust. You don't even want to see this color on there really. Basically, I just, you're going to kind of make streaks randomly around, but streaks that you can't see. That's what I mean by that. Just like a really fine dusting where it kind of, Tints it a little bit and it changes the color as you go along. Nothing heavier than that, or it looks really, really quite ugly actually. So just like that, okay? And we're gonna make it kind of blend together just a hair. And I just do streaks kind of angled in different directions from each other, and then follow follow the streak all the way around the gun as well. And with this, we're just kind of breaking up the color pattern just a little bit. And I mean it like really, really, really light. What you guys will notice is when you add your second color, especially going from a dark color and putting on a light color, you're gonna end up with little flecks, kind of like that. Do not worry about this. We're gonna take care of that with the lacquer thinner um, and those will go away. So we got our project taken down from the tree outside and this is kind of where we're looking right here, okay? So we've got our khakis, we got our little bit darker nutmeg mixed in here. This is what you want. So we're going for a really distressed look, like a battle-worn look. So um, when it comes to the layers of paint, only do one. We just did one base layer of khaki, um, then one touch-up layer to get, uh, you know, the different part of the red dot and the stock. And then the last was just the stripes of the nutmeg. And that, that is absolutely it because we're going to want to wear this paint down. So the more you put on, the harder it is to do that. So. This step that I'm showing you right now is completely optional, but we are going to physically distress this. Um, it's not gonna be artificial, it's gonna be real. This step does ding up your gun, it does scratch your gun, so if you don't wanna do that, just skip this step entirely, okay? Um, what I've got here is just a piece of wire attached to paracord. Um, I just went through that same loop we were in earlier and wrapped it around on each other, and I'll show you what we're gonna do with it outside. Okay, so outside of my house, I got all this gravel, right? Um, you guys can choose a spot in the dirt, preferably where there's rocks and other things that are going to ding, ding up your gun. Now this step is very brief. If you do it right, it's not going to damage anything. Um, it's going to break a lot of your hearts to watch this right now. I know you guys are going to be pissed in the comments, but it works awesome. Let me show you how to do it. So you're going to grab your wire and you're basically going to take your gun on a little bit of a walk, a little bit of a gravel rock. So I just kind of slowly drag it flip it over, oh, you're going fishing with your gun here, you don't need to do a lot, it's kind of just keep your eye on it, and what it'll start to do is start to chip off paint in places where it naturally would from banging against like rocks or trees just out of natural use and that's what we're going for you can kind of manually do it yourselves you might be wondering why i have gloves on um I like to wear mechanics gloves and uh, it doesn't really matter what kind of gloves you wear, but I like to wear gloves and after I do this, I kind of take the gun and I hold it and I start rubbing into it where it naturally would rub, where I'd naturally hold the gun on the trigger, on the, on the motor grip, on the front hand guard, that kind of thing. And because the paint is fresh, um, because it is a really light coat, it will actually start to wear away naturally just like it would um, if we're being used this heavily like on a deployment or that kind of thing. Yeah, we're back on the workbench. This is kind of our end result from the uh, taking it on a walk outside. Sorry for all of you guys that your heart's just churning right now. 
Don't worry, it's all for the greater good. Uh, now I want to show you real quick what I do with my gloves. So you can take your gloves, just hold it, mess around with your buttons, that kind of thing. Um, you'll see as you start to mess with it, the paint will rub off. Just like so. And that's what you're going for. And you kind of just want to go over spots like, it's really hard to do. Spots like your grip. Um, if you're painting your trigger, you definitely want to go over your trigger a lot. Go over the spots that will get worn down uh, just from normal use, right? And just know whatever spots you'd like to see it a little bit more distressed. Now this takes time, um, not a lot of time, just whatever you want to put into it is what you're going to get out of it really. That's kind of what it comes down to. So you can start to rub it off. Along with that, you don't have to use gloves. Um, you can also use your sandpaper and your sponge pad. And what you want to do with the sandpaper is kind of go over it and just kind of kiss it. And you're going to kind of just go really fast, wicks over it, and it'll start to to um, bring the silver out on just like the corners, little edges where the metal would have scraped. Just like this. Um, mainly you're hitting edges, giving it that contrast. Making it a little harder in certain places. When the black shows through, that's when it looks really, really, really cool, so. really can't go wrong here. Just keep at it until you get the look that you're going for. Um, same thing with the sponge pad. Right. Sponge pad, you can use more on the open areas of the gun, like right in here, um, kind of the top of the shroud. This is also really good for wearing that, blending that nutmeg to the actual khaki, just like so. And all the all the changes are very subtle, so it does take some time. But this is how you do it. If you have unwanted scratches on your gun, um, if you're distressing, you really shouldn't have unwanted scratches. They should all be wanted, but this will take it off. Like right here, see we have these Mars right here, get this in on there. And it'll start to take all that off. All right, so just keep at that for a minute. I'll see you in a second. Okay, so we're moving along in the distressing process using uh, the gloves, using the sandpaper and the uh, sanding pad. Another thing I wanna show you guys, um, something I do, it's called raking. Um, you don't have to do this again, it's optional, but I do. Um, basically, it's applying scratches where just randomly. Not too many though, if you do too many, it kind of looks a little bit retarded. But basically, I just take a wire and I fold it in half, have kind of two, and I just kind of just kind of nick it in a couple random spots, just like so. And it creates little scratches just like that. That's what you're going for. Not too much, just, just enough. Just like so. Okay, so I got to the point where I'm actually really satisfied with the minor distressing that we've done to this rifle. Um, we went ahead and used the sandpaper, we used the sanding block, we used the gloves, we used the raking method with the wire. Um, I went through and removed the tape from the trigger and also from the feed tray cover um, to kind of give it that little bit of contrast. I'm going to hit that with some sandpaper right now, get a little bit of silver coming out up on here. And we are ready to move on to our next step with the lacquer thinner. All right, just a few tips when you're using the lacquer thinner for the hard distressing. Um, lacquer thinner can and will eat through certain plastics. Um, I've noticed that on ABS plastic, which is what... Uh, most airsoft gun companies use with their guns. It's fine, doesn't do anything, but lighter plastics, it might eat through it. Uh, metal, you're totally fine. Um, it also does sting if you get it in cuts, so just kind of be aware of that. So what I like to do is have like a little dish, which is a magnetic bowl, 
and you want to pour about a quarter inch, half inch tall of uh, liquid in there. You just pour a little bit at a time, it evaporates. It evaporates super, super quick. Now you're gonna take your rags, right? And you're gonna dip it in, get nice and wet. And you wanna identify places on your gun where you really wanna strip the paint back to black. So places that are really gonna get worn from excessive touching or rubbing, that kind of thing. So like on an M4, I like to do where my cheek rests against my stock, um, where my finger goes when I'm not on the trigger, um, magwell, that kind of thing. So with the 249, probably some of the main places we're gonna look at are definitely the carrying handle. So we take our, our wet rag just like this, and we're gonna start to rub away the paint. Just like that. And it might get a little dusty like that, so what you can do is your rag is gonna get super dirty, just to pick a clean spot and go back over it. And I'll take it right off. You can even take a fresh, clean, dry rag and go over it after that. And that's how you do that. That's how pretty much aggressive lacquer thinner is. It will eat right through this stuff. So, go ahead and hit it again. This will also help blend the uh, the nutmeg and the khaki together and give it that kind of cool two-tone desert look. So then we want to get the top there as well. And when you get like runs or kind of streaks, make sure you go over them, hit them again. Anything that doesn't look natural, go ahead and hit it again. Just like that. And the cool thing is you get to choose how much you want to take off. So you can take off a lot like that where you stripped most of it to black, or you can just take off just a tiny little bit. So um, if you let your rag um, evaporate just a little bit, you can go over areas a little bit easier and take off black I and mean, take off paint where you really want them to, to wear down, that kind of thing. So just like that. And occasionally, depending on the paint that the company used, it will eat through the black. And that doesn't usually happen, but it can happen. So just be aware of that. If that does start happening, um, just realize that you really got to go really light on it or it will eat through the black, the original color of the, the gun itself. Doesn't usually happen, but occasionally it will. And just keep going over the project until you're absolutely satisfied. Another thing you could do is take a toothbrush head or something, get it in there, and then you can start doing fine work like in the in the grooves and stuff where you'd like to wear it down just a little bit. And then take your dry cloth and go back over it. Etc. Okay. All right. So this is the finished project, guys. This is where I'm happy with it. Nice and distressed, two-color desert, and that's how it's done. It's really easy, actually. So if I missed anything in the tutorial, guys, go ahead and leave a comment below. If you guys have any questions, I'll answer them all. Um, if you guys would like to see any more paint job videos slash tutorials in the future, just go ahead and let me know. And I'm willing to do them all. Any kind of paint job you guys want to know how to do, I'll do it for you. Alright guys, thanks for watching again. Go ahead and like the video. And uh, if you're not subscribed to the channel yet, go ahead and subscribe. There's lots of awesome content to come. And we will see you guys next time. Alright guys, just real quick. One thing I forgot to add is if you guys want to add clear coat to your gun, you totally can. Um, if you're going to, make sure you get Rust-Oleum Matte Clear, not gloss, okay? I have gloss here just as an example. Do not get gloss, it'll be really shiny, you want matte. And then you can go ahead and go over your gun like, I would do three coats of it. And that will protect your paint job. Your paint job will take a lot longer to distress even further. But if you want to distress it more, go ahead and leave that matte off and as you, uh, that clear off. And as you continue to play with your gun, 
it's uh, going to continue to unfold um, distressing wise and it'll continue to wear down and the paint will end up looking really, really cool and even more worn than it already is. So anyways, thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time.